Hey folks, Chris Vaynerviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. It's been a couple weeks. I actually moved my home studio into a commercial space, and I've been down this road of acoustic treatment and tuning, and that's that's a whole crazy nexus of hopes and dreams getting smashed with anxieties and then facing reality and how you can work within reality. And, you know, enough about that, but that's why. And if you're at all interested, maybe I'll create a post or a video all about my journey through acoustic treatment. But let's talk about organizing your Logic Pro mix sessions. I personally am a big believer in treating the recording and production stage separate from the mix stage and separate from the mastering stage. The reason is if we're wearing all the hats in a production, as many of us are, from musician to producer to recording engineer to mix engineer, That's a lot of hats to wear in any way that we can create boundaries and sort of set different stages for different parts of the production that helps us get a little refresh on the project. That to me is ideal and preferred. When I record a project in Logic, once all the recording is done, I export every file as an audio file, whether it's virtual instruments or audio files that I've recorded, export them all, I open a new project, and this is gonna be my mix project. So I'm gonna drag in all of my audio files into Logic from a separate project. Before we do that though, I'm just gonna to go to Logic Pro 10 Preferences and Display because I wanna point out something real quick. If we go into Tracks here, there's this option called Appearance, Color, and I have it set to Auto Progress 96. For now, let's set it to Static and see what happens. If I navigate to that folder with all of my audio files and I drag them in, just drag them in to 1.1, create new tracks. Now Logic will automatically populate the session with these audio regions, and that's great. However, every track is blue, and now we'll have to spend 10 minutes or so organizing based on different colors and, you know, because you can't stare at a session that's all the same color because it makes it very difficult to navigate the session. Instead, if we go back and we go to Logic Pro 10, Preferences, Display, and we go to Tracks, Now I'll set it to Auto Progress 96. All right, let's go to that folder, drag them back in. Once again, create new tracks. And like that, Logic has automatically given every region its own color and every track its own color. This saves a tremendous amount of time and energy just, you know, on tedious bits that we don't really have to worry about if we don't have to. So perfect, now everything's color coded. Of course, I would go ahead and rename everything with a short name. And with an icon, if you right click or control click, I'm not gonna dig into the super basics. Instead, let's start digging into organizing our different tracks based on what style of instrument or group of instruments they belong to. I like to organize my tracks in my session with track stacks. They're amazing and I like to organize based on drums, bass, guitars, vocals, synths, so on and so forth. So it's super easy. If we locate all of the drum tracks, we have overheads, kick in, kick out, floor tom, got a rack tom somewhere, snare. And if I use shift command G, suddenly all of my drum tracks are added to this track stack. And a track stack, if we go to the mixer, is pretty simple. All these tracks are now part of this expandable folder, so I can collapse it. And you can see it's been collapsed within the main window as well and the mixer. And we can reopen it using this triangle and all of the tracks have been routed to the same bus. And that bus happens to be the insert for this track stack. Track stacks navigate all of the tracks to a single aux channel, which is top level here. So if I name this drum, and I like to give all my track stacks the color pink because they're easy to identify. So now we have all of our drum tracks routed to the same place. Makes for easy organization. If I collapse it, now it's even easier to see what we're working with in the session. So if I quickly Just grab all my guitar tracks, shift command G, and I like to call my guitars axes, and then give it a color, and the bass, same thing. It's super easy from here to organize our tracks and also to process our tracks. If I determine that I want to process the whole drum kit as a single instrument, because let's think about it, the drums are really just one instrument made up of like sub instruments. And sometimes we want to process a whole group of instruments holistically. That's super easy. Now I can apply EQ or compression directly to the entire group of instruments. 
And if I want to pan those instruments, I can just pan within the track stack, you know, so I wouldn't pan the track stack. Instead, I would just pan within it. And it makes for super easy organization. I love it. All right, number three, very important to me, is to clean up any dead space or just low-level noise that's not helping anything. For example, if we have a vocal track, and perhaps in between the different takes, our vocalist is, you know, just standing around, breathing, rustling papers, coughing. That sort of stuff is not going to help our production. If the drummer is just waiting during a particularly empty section, they might be making noise, or there just might be ambient noise of the room itself. Let's get rid of that stuff. We don't need it. For this particular application, it all depends on what kind of tracks I'm working with. Since we have drum tracks here, I want to process and edit these all identically because they're part of the same instrument that was recorded at the same time. So in this case, I would just use my marquee tool. Let me back up here. And just highlight and hit delete to clean it up. Same thing here. So if I expand the waveform view, I can just use the marquee tool to highlight, make a selection, clean up. Same thing at the end. Now for instruments that are solo hanging by themselves, for example, a guitar track or a bass track, these are similar, but we can use this. I like to use strip silence. And if we use control X, we're introduced with this window that tells us a few different things. Number one, this box here lets us know that strip silence has identified that this audio is something that we want to keep because it exceeds a certain threshold. If I bump up the threshold, it may eliminate everything because this is not loud enough to exceed a threshold of negative five. So we can bring it up or down. Awesome. So a 25, we've exceeded the threshold and everything outside of this box is what's going to be removed. We can also adjust the attack time to allow a little more of a window at the front end. If I reduce it, it butts right up against the waveform. And if I introduce post-release time, we introduce more at the tail end. If there's some decay or ambience, if I back it off, it removes most of it. Now I can just hit OK or return. And just like that, the region has been cleaned up. I'll undo, shift command, redo, booyah. So now we can navigate through the whole session and do exactly this. And we can use the up or down arrows to quickly navigate through our session. So like that, obviously logic is dicing up a little more than we want. So let's reduce the threshold. Now right here, you can see that some of the boxes overlap. To reduce this overlapping feature, I want this to be treated as one continuous piece of audio. We can increase the minimum time to accept silence, just like that. If we increase it once more, now this is all one piece of audio and anything outside of it will be removed. So once again, return, just like that. So you can see there, and I can keep navigating through the session as such. So once again, let's bring down the threshold. All right so on and so forth. Now let's navigate our way down to something like the vocals. Okay, wonderful. Right here, awesome. Okay, now once I've gone through and I've cleaned everything up with strip silence, there's one other procedure that I like to use to make sure that all of my tracks are comparably loud. Sometimes we record, you know, for example, a bass guitar, and maybe we recorded it a little too quiet. And then some aspects of the drums we recorded very loud because they're very transient, tend to be very loud. And so there's this disparity where the drums are really loud and the bass is really quiet. And now we have to bring the drum tracks down considerably in the mixer. We'd have to select all our drum tracks and bring them way down and then go to the bass and jack it way up to try to correct this disparity in volume. It's just not a smart way of going about mixing. You don't want to have to jack certain instruments way up and other ones way down. So instead, I like to use a function called normalize region gain. And I love this feature. It's so fantastic because you can select all the regions in your session, go to functions here and go to normalize region gain. And we're introduced with this window that offers us a couple different options. We can affect either individual regions as I prefer or a collective selection. So all of these will be treated as one selection where the maximum loudness dictates what everything is set to or individual tracks where it's per track, not necessarily per region. Let's work with per region. And then we can pick an algorithm of either loudness or peak activity. 
So many people like to work with peak activity. We can set it to negative 18. This tends to be a safe bet. If I hit apply, just like that, now everything within these regions has been set to a maximum loudness of negative 18 based on the peak activity of each region. But we also have another option, which I tend to use, but it depends. In this case, we can use loudness, which is based on loudness units. And we can set the target level. Let's set it pretty low. And let's just see what happens. We hit apply. And now everything is quite loud, surprisingly. Usually it's not this loud for me, but using loudness units can be a really great way to make everything comparably loud too, because peak is really based on very fast transient activity, where loudness is based more on the average loudness over time. It's your pick, your decision, whatever you jive with the most. But if we go ahead and select every track, let me back up and select every track here and use normalized region gain, set it to peak activity of negative 18. Now, every region in my session is set to a comparable volume based on peak loudness. And that's amazing. That took like two seconds. Now, everything is at a place where we don't have to jack instruments way up and way down. Now, everything is more or less in the realm of each other. I love this. And this makes for very easy mixing and production. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new posts, new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.